Hi gang and welcome to Wellness Wednesday with Kathy Stevens and uh, we are in week two of our 21 and done challenge. For those of you that didn't make it last week, don't think you're too late because you picked the 21 days. We started a week ago, it just means that your 21 and done won't be done until an extra week and you can start at any time. Remember the goal for 2021, which is why we're doing the 21 and done challenge, is to set a SMART goal and to really focus in and to log and reward yourself over 21 days because we know that it takes 21 days to form a new habit and that's key to changing behavior in a positive direction. So what I had challenged everyone to do last week was to make some type of a chart I actually made one for you and put it up on the 60 up website for members if you want to print it out or just make your own chart and kind of keep track of your 21 days. What I want you to do within those 21 days is to log what you do every day and it can even be as simple as saying a rest day or I did Debbie's workout and then Dan's and Kathy's or I went for a walk. Just make note of what you're doing in the area of physical fitness because that's what our goals are related to for the 21 and done and then at the end of 21 days check in with yourself hey Deb see if you have noted some improvement and that takes us to my discussion today noting improvement well it's super important not only to log what you do but to recognize when you're doing well or progressing. That is one of the key elements to adherence, is seeing positive change. So today, for a special day, we're going to do several what I call checks or screens to see how strong you are, how good your balance is, how great your endurance is, with a short marker or a point of where you are today. And then you can employ those same exact tests weekly or wait until the end of the 21 days to see what kind of improvement you may have uh, garnered during this challenge. All right, so I see people coming on in the room. Hi, Betsy. Hey, good to see you too, Craig. Oh, nice to see you back. I don't know if you were here last week for our 21 challenge. So 21 days, that's what I'm challenging to you to. This is 2021, everything's gonna be fun in 21. 21 days, we're gonna do 21 minutes seven minutes today of cardio endurance, seven minutes of joint mobility and stability, and then seven minutes of muscle strengthening. Now that brings me to what equipment you're gonna need for my workout today. Then we'll get right away to some of those um, screens. First thing you're gonna need is water. So have some water nearby. Staying hydrated is always important. Second, you're gonna need a sturdy chair, something that won't move on you. And you can even have it backed up to a wall for added security. But it should be a nice stable chair. You're gonna need your tubing uh, or dumbbell. Uh, as I've said before, it's not gonna be attached. We're gonna use it freestanding. So either your long tube, if you have it nearby, or for some of you guys that prefer to just work with a dumbbell, the strength moves can be done with a dumbbell or a water bottle or a soup can for that matter, because a lot of it is just concentrated effort and the resistance is just bonus, okay? So have that nearby. Of course, your 60 up board. And uh, we'll be working on the 60 up throughout, working on balance throughout, but also using that 777 format for the rest of the month. Seven minutes of cardio, seven minutes of strength, seven minutes of balance, mobility, and stability. Divide it up different ways just to keep it fresh. So in today's workout, unlike like last workout, we're gonna end with our seven minutes of strength. So it'll just be a little different. That way when you do the workouts on your own, because remember these are recorded, so you can come back and do them as many times a week as you want, you'll have some variance between the workouts. Now, important for me to tell everyone in the room, which is great to see you guys joining me, is that you always listen to your body. So at any point that you feel that something doesn't feel right, you're feeling a little lightheaded, a little dizzy, your feet just aren't kicking in the way they should, it's nice to have a chair nearby to sit down and, and just kind of walk it out from a seated position, keeping your blood flow going, but giving yourself a chance to have a little personal break whenever you need it during this workout or any workout. 
Uh, the other thing is if there's a particular move that bothers you, maybe you have a rotator cuff ish issue, shoulder problem, sh frozen shoulder, a knee issue, a hip issue, a spinal issue, those are going to be spot specific and there might just be a specific exercise or a certain exercise that bothers that joint of yours. We all come to this workout with a different history uh, of past injuries or conditions. So listen to your body, omit if it bothers you and you can't simply change it by modifying. How do we modify? We modify typically by either slowing it down, reducing the range, or if there is resistance involved, like the tube or weight, doing it without that resistance. So range, speed, and resistance are the three ways to modify anything we do. Give you a good example. This shoulder is sticky on me. I, I had surgery on it once for problem in that area and it's got a little arthritis so you'll find that when I lift my arms this one doesn't go as high it just doesn't this one is really easy to move all the way up fluidly this one's a little click 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 and it sticks that's okay it just means if I'm doing an overhead press I'm still gonna push to the limit but I may never achieve that full range as I do on this side do I give up on it no but do I stop short of pain yes so we all have areas like that Listen, listen for pain. It's your best indicator of where your stop point is. And for those of you that have chronic pain, just because that is what you're living with, just make sure the pain is no worse than what you normally are able to deal with throughout the day. And two hours after the workout, it shouldn't have a rebound effect or cause more pain. It means you did a little too much. That's called the two hour pain rule. So again, just going over those in the new year, we've talked about them in other lectures. But today, I wanna to save that time for those checks so that you have a way of monitoring yourself. Now, if you have your chart nearby on the back side, you can write the name of the uh, screen that we're doing or the check and put your results. I'm gonna spend the first five minutes of this workout doing that. And then you can re-record this any other time we do them together during the 21 and done challenge or on your own. Just These are all great self-checks. And you know the best part about it? The check itself is an exercise. So they will be helping us warm up as we do our checks. So let's get started with those checks. How do you feel, guys? All right, let me check in with you before we start our checks and see who's in the room. We've got Carol and Ken and Pat. Thank you guys for being here. So glad you're watching. Hope, hopefully you're also moving with me. If not now, hi, Pat. Maybe after the workout, sometimes people like to watch what I'm going to do, and then that way it's almost like a rehearsal for their muscles, and they can join in. Hi, Mona, at any time they want. These are kept online, you know, so you can also come back to the 60 Up members group and do them on your own from the page or go to YouTube and find us. Just plug in 60 Up, and you'll see Dan and Debbie and myself, everything we've done this past summer and through till today. All right. So onward to the checks. So my first uh, check, and we're not going to use any music for the checks, is a cardio endure. Oh, balance check. Sorry, we're going to start with balance because I want to catch your balance while you're fresh. It involves timing and logging. And so what I want you to do, I'm going to use my big clock with the second hand so that I'm sure that I'm timing you right. The first one is a balance check. And it's the one leg stance balance check. And the goal is to stand on one foot for 30 seconds and then the other foot for 30 seconds without having to touch. Now, if that's too advanced for you, because right now you just, you know, you're a little bit more uh, stability, you have to have some stability, then instead you're just gonna do a full minute of narrow stance, no hands on, and see if you can hold your balance with good alignment rather than the 30 second on each leg. So I wanna give you that way out. And if that's even too difficult, fingertips on the poles, just standing real still. What I want you to do, and I'm gonna count down the time, is remember where you had to either touch or put the foot down or sit down. And that's what you're going to do. You're gonna write how long you could go without having to do one of those three things. Chair is nearby if you need to sit. So the first test, again, is the standing one leg balance. 30 seconds each leg. Okay, so everybody, I want you on your right leg first, line it up. We're gonna set the knee first before I count. And again, I'll be counting down. So I'll say 10 seconds, 20 seconds, 30 seconds, so you can write where you made it. Align yourself, 
head over shoulders, shoulders over hips, abdominals in tight, lift the left leg to about parallel to floor, hold your pull, ready, set, let go. All right, guys, see if you can stay there. That's, we're hitting five seconds. You've made it five seconds. Let's see if you can continue. 10, ankle a little wiggly. Here comes 15, keep your chest up. Ooh, try not to touch. Here comes 20, not yet. You're just at the 20 point. Awesome. 25 and 30. All right, shake off that leg. All right, if you have a pen nearby or just mentally want to try to remember a little cognitive test, you would write down how long you were able to stay comfortably on that one foot without having to grab your handle or falling off base too much. Other side, write down that it was the right leg. What did you achieve? All right, here comes the left leg. So first of all, set it up for success. Leg under hip, shoulder square, head high. Hold your poles at first to get set. Lift your knee parallel to floor. Let go and here we go. Hold on, breathe, keep your vision forward. That's five seconds. A little wobble down there is okay. There's 10 seconds. Chin up parallel to floor. There's 15. Coming around. Got 20. Can you make it to 25? Chin parallel. There's 25. It's hard to talk and do this. Almost. And that's 30. So go ahead and write down now on your paper what you achieved in balance on your left leg. All right, now if you had to hold the poles the whole time, that's okay, write that as well. Because hopefully as we continue, maybe you'll be able to do this without grabbing your pole or holding on for five seconds, 10 seconds, the next time 15. That's where you mark your progress. All right, so that's the balance test. Moving on to endurance, are you ready for this? Again, I'm gonna use my clock. What we're going to do is take your right side and I want you to take the red gripper for your tube and slide it down to about mid thigh, right between your knee and, your, and where your pelvis is. Figure out what about mid is between knee and pelvis and then slide that hook so that the bottom part of that hook or top, doesn't matter which, you monitor it, is level with that middle point. Okay, now that's your marker on your right side. You're gonna lift your knee to that marker, right to that marker as you march. And you're gonna count every time this knee hits that mark. You're gonna do as many as you can for a full minute. Let me demonstrate. So you're gonna one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, And if you have to hold on, that's okay too. Just mark that because your goal is to be able to do a minute without holding on and it's okay to, to hold on when you need to. Move over towards that one stick so it's real obvious where you are and this is your safety valve if you need it. Are you ready? Test it out. See if when that knee comes up to where your red marker is, it's about midway between knee and hip. Full minute, this is cardio endurance. You count to yourself. I'm not gonna pace you on this because everyone's gonna have a different pace. Count and remember. So are you ready? Okay, line up with good posture. I'm watching the clock. Ready, set, go. Fast as you can, hit that mark. Do it at your own pace, count. Make sure you're counting. I'm watching your counting. That's it. Breathe. You can pump your arms or leave your arms at your side. It's up to you. Keep going. Fast as you can, but get that knee up there. Hit that mark, hit that mark. Keep counting. Over halfway. Twenty seconds to go. You can always stop if you need to. Keep your count going. Fifteen seconds. Fast as you can. Don't worry about my pace. seconds. Get as many as you can. Two, one, and done. Okay, tap it out, tap it out. All right, notice that got your cardio up? Yes, so we're, we're testing our endurance with that one minute step in place. 
All right, so again, if you have a pencil or just want to remember, write down how many knee ups to that spot, right side, you were able to achieve in one minute. All right, moving on to strength. So that's our cardio check. Now, our strength check is going to involve our chair. So that's why you needed your chair nearby. It's the third, it, what we're gonna do is 30 seconds of standing up fully, sitting down fully, and you wanna count as many as you can do. Now, for those of you that need assistance, if you want to come closer to your poles so that you can hold your poles and help pull you up, that's okay. But ideally, you wanna be able to do this with your arms crossed your chest. Don't force yourself on this. Have that ability to use your poles, but make sure that you're not so close to your board that you're gonna hit it with your feet. You've gotta get that range so that you can lean in. Are you ready? Again, you need to count to yourself. Don't worry about my pace. As a matter of fact, I'm only gonna do the first few because I don't wanna force you to count pace. Ready, set, go. 30 seconds. As many as you can, full range, straighten the legs, sit the butt down, up and down, keep counting. You've got this. Stop when you need to. Use your poles if you need to, you're halfway there. It's only 30 seconds, this is leg strength. Keep counting, as many as you can do. Your own pace. Beautiful, five seconds to go. Last second. And that's it. Log your strength in your legs. Okay, so count how many you did in 30 seconds. And now we move on to upper body. So for upper body, those of you that are super fit can do a regular push-up. Others that feel like a regular push-up was something you're not quite ready to do or able to do can do a chair push-up. On the chair push-up, you want to make sure that your chair is grounded. So I'm going to put my chair up against the wall so that it doesn't move at all. Then I'm gonna step back so that my body looks like a push-up position. And then I'm gonna come down to a right angle at my elbow and straighten all the way. Again, we're gonna count as many as you can do in 30 seconds. All right, so on the floor, for those of you that still do floor push-ups, on your chair or a countertop, for those of you that prefer the little bit, uh, quite a bit more modified, all right? So let's get into position. Don't forget to count for yourself. Your body should look like a nice plank. Ready? Take a nice deep breath. Get yourself prepared. Feet about shoulder width apart. Set and go. Count them down. So remember, bend those elbows to right angles. Bend and press. Count to yourself. This also measures core strength because you've got to keep that core in line. Do as many as you can, you're halfway through. Get that right angle at the elbow and straighten all the way. Keep counting, you've only got 10 seconds to go. Excellent, five seconds. Stop, all right. Go ahead and move your chair back to behind your uh, 60 up board so that it's always there if you need it. You know, you never know during a workout when you want to sit down, and I want you to always feel safe to sit down. So those are our two strength, our cardio, and our balance screen. The last two screens we'll actually do at the end of class. It will be for lower body or back of the body, posterior side flexibility, and upper body shoulder girdle flexibility. And we'll do that later because I'd like to get into the workout now. How do you guys feel? Hopefully. Now, if you didn't do those screens and you were just watching, that's fine too because now you know how to do them and you can do them yourselves. All you need is to have a little clock and then you just time yourself. On the website, I will write what exactly we did so you can use that at any time you want. But just as a reminder, we did the 30 second uh, one foot balance on each leg. How many seconds can you stay without falling over? We did the one minute march with the knee coming up to about that middle spot between the pelvis and the kneecap. We did the seated squat and lift for 30 seconds, right? We did the wall push up for 30 seconds. And so those are how we're gonna monitor and mark. 
They're kind of based on other uh, screens that are done in fitness, but modified down for 60 up. So rather than doing a three minute step test, we're doing a one minute step test because we're not really worried about norms or comparing you to these tests that have been done for years with a lot of data. So we can say, oh, for this age group, you're fair, you're advanced, you're a beginner, because that doesn't really matter to us. What matters to us is how you compare to you as you progress. So the amount of time is arbitrary as long as we keep the same time across testing, okay? That way it's relative to yourself. And that's what I care about. I care about you seeing improvement in you. All right, so these are monitors or markers that allow us to feel rewards, self-rewarded, when we see improvement. Now let's get moving to our 777 workout. All right. I, I'm glad you're here, Chad, even a little late, better late than ever. I don't know who came up with that saying, but it's true. All right, let's get some music on, and we will start our official warm-up, our official warm-up, but you should already feel some, uh, you know, some warm-up effects because um, we have been doing movements that are exercises. All right, let's come behind the 60-up board. I'm still going to use my clock because 777 wouldn't be 777 without timing. <laughs> All right, 21 minutes of solid, good training, balance training. March in place behind that 60 up board. Think about your posture. Don't lift your feet too high. We just want to get that cardio back. Nice, light, moderate cardio. Now push down with your palms down onto those poles, engaging the muscles around the shoulder girdle. Can you feel that? Chin parallel to floor, chest up. Easy march behind, up, down, up, down. Not too high. Just pump those legs, but lift that posture. All right, now roll the shoulders. Keep marching if you can coordinate that. A little coordination never hurts anyone. Deep breaths. All right, let's change to a sit squat. So sit back, push the hips forward. Push them back, push them forward. Again, just getting those hinge joints going, the knees and hips. Hinge back, and every time, see if you can go a little further. Sit back, and up. As you sit back, it also mobilizes your ankles. Sit back, and up. Two more. Last one, sit back. Now rise up to the toes and then drop the heels. Just the ankle, up to the toes and drop the heels. And think about standing real tall, tightening your muscles on the way up, slowly elevating the foot down. Roll through that foot, nice. Feel those toes spreading in your shoe box. That's it. Now, last one, and for those of you that have a little ankle difficulty, let's do some marching on your heels. So try to keep your toes up. I know this is really hard for some of us. I appreciate that you try. Try to pound those heels into the floor and keep your toes high. Seven, six, five, four, three, two, and widen out. Now, just take and rock it side to side. Let your shoulders move, let your shoulder girdle move, let your body sway. Holding on with light fingertips or just the palms on top. Stretching across the shoulder, through the leg. Excellent. Now let's take the right arm and reach up and push back. So we're gonna reach to the ceiling and we're gonna push behind you. Just getting some nice rotation. Mobility through that spine, shoulder, hips and thighs. That's it. Reach up, push behind. Reach up, push behind. Now this is a cross movement, cross pattern. is always also stimulating for the brain. So let's wake up those neurofibers, those neural pathways. Good. Two more. Last one and then bring it back to center and just shrug it out.
side to side, still rocking the body. We'll get on the board soon enough, but let's first start with just rocking it out on the ground. Now get that other arm ready, because we're gonna do the same thing, but in the opposite direction. You're gonna reach up, and you're gonna push back. Notice I have one hand on my handle so that I feel safe and comfortable throughout the range of motion. Reach up, push back. Reach up, that stretch should feel really nice after those push-ups. Excellent. Rotate that spine just a bit. Deep breath. Inhale and exhale. Ooh, open up those lungs. Two more times. Last one. And now stay center again. Rock it out. Bring those feet in together. Let's just loosen up the spine a little bit and then we're off to the races. What race? 21777 race. Here we go. Center it out. Flat back and roll through. Again, as you come forward, you're hinging at the hip. Let me show you from the side. I come forward, I roll through. I come forward, I roll through. Four more. Nice. Three. Last two. One more time. Awesome, we should feel like that blood flow is good. We're ready to start our first minute of cardio. We're gonna do lunges up, let me show you first. So you're just gonna lunge and push back, right on that red line in the middle. Are you ready? Let's go. One minute of these. Now, if you need to slow the pace down to be comfortable, slow it down. We wanna bear some weight into that front thigh and then push back which is where we get a little more cardio. You can bend your elbows and also engage more upper body muscle during the move, pushing back through the arms and legs together. That's what makes something cardio, using a lot of muscle in a rhythmic, steady fashion that'll get the heart rate pumping, the respiratory system breathing deeper, and keeping it there at a steady pace. 15 seconds to go with this movement. 10 seconds. Five seconds. Last one. All right, now walk it out. Walk it out. Basic right step for the next minute. Ready, here we go. Up, up, down, down. So look at your board at first. It's okay to look down. But you want to hit about two and two. That's about shoulder width apart. You're just climbing a little bit of a rickety step. <laughs> and what's great about stepping up on the board is you get the neurological bonus of having to balance as you shift the weight from side to side. Cognizant of it, but really it's almost happening reactively. So you feel like, I'm comfortable with this. Maybe I wasn't the first few times I did it, but guess what? My brain figured it out, and it's reacting without me having to be too cautious. That's it, guys. Ten more seconds. Basic step right. Again. Last one. And now we're gonna do alternating steps. So you step and you knee up and you step down. Other side. Step, knee up, step, down. Now this is still cardio because you're continuously moving, but it's adding more balance, isn't it? So if that's too difficult, instead of lifting the knee, just tap up. See how I touch my toe on the board? That would be the modification. You could also choose to do this on the floor completely and not bother with stepping up if this was too difficult. Good, keep going. Step up, step down. Now you can go slower than I am. I'm keeping it to the beat, but you don't have to. Up, down, two, step, chin and chest high. Whew, 10 more seconds to go. And then we're gonna do basic step again, but just leading with the other leg, all right? Excellent. Two more. Last one. 
And now your left leg basic. Ready? Up, two, down, two. Excellent. You've got this. Up, two, down. Lift, lift. Whew. Two, down. Let it rock naturally. Ground, ground, floor, floor. Ground it right or left, right. Down, down. You've got it. Keep that heart rate pumping. It's up, two. We got about 15 seconds of this move. Up, two. Up, two. Five more seconds. All right, now alternating foot on the diagonal. So let's take our right foot and go over and up, down, two, over. So you're kind of between the two and the three as you step up and lift your knee or step up and tap your toe. Remember, that's how to make it easier. Make sure as you're doing this that your body is pivoting and the toes and knees are staying in the same direction. Take it nice and slow. You can always slow it down more. Wiggle your fingers every once in a while. Keep that pattern going. Excellent. This is our fifth minute. We got two more to go. Then we're done. 21 and done. Seven and done. Cardio. Keep going. Nice. 10 more seconds. Beautiful. Last two, last one. All right, now step up to the center on one and one, and let's take and rock it out. Let's go, one minute of a nice aggressive side to side rock. Feet are about two and two. Arms are also contributing by pushing the handles side to side as you rock the ankles and you bear that weight from right to left. Chin up, chest up, come on, get that cardio going. Breathe, keep your chest lifted, your hips are back a little, your knees are bent a little. You push through the foot and shift the hip. You use the arms, you've got this. Minute six, we just got about 10 more seconds to go. Nice. Four, three, two, and last one. Okay, now bring the feet together. Last minute is gonna be a lunge back. So you're gonna bend down and bring it up, touching the floor behind you. And yes, you can bottom out, right, left, or try to stay balanced in the center. Bending both knees, lunging back, stepping up. Remember, go at your own pace. The key is to keep movement going so it stays in the cardio flow. This is our last minute of pure cardio. I mean, sometimes you're still going to feel a cardiorespiratory effect even when you're doing something that's maybe a little more balanced or strength oriented. But the goal of this last seven minutes was to keep your body in movement. Huh, we're almost there. Ten more seconds. Beautiful, four, three, two, last one. Okay, shake it off. Time to get a little water, okay? So bottom out, step off, come around and get some water. You deserve it. Whew, awesome. Good to see you here, Jen. We're one third the way done with our 21 and done. All right, seven minutes of cardio today is gonna be followed by seven minutes of what I call stability mobility. Stability is the key to balance. Mobility is the key to dynamic balance. What better device to work on that? Here. So let's step on up to the center. And I want you to start with a nice comfortable stance somewhere around two and two that you can do a squat in. We're gonna do a slow squat back as full range mobility as you can and then we're going to slowly come up and rise to our toes and hold for a few seconds 
Here we go for a minute. Are you ready? Starting now. So again, take your own tempo. There's no rush, but get your range of motion first and then get your strength and stability of motion. Let's go down again, or maybe you're slower than me, that's okay. But really think about lifting high on the feet. Really think about sitting back as far as you can without rounding your back. Keep that chest and back nice and long in line with the spine. Inhale and exhale. Tighten up and stabilize. Good, sit back and mobilize. That's it, tighten up, squeeze the glutes. Nice, again, sitting back and then lifting up. Whew. Sitting back, oh, we only got 10 more seconds. You can do this, high on those toes. Five seconds, maybe one more. Nice, all right, now, Bring the feet in to the red line. The next one is going to, to, to be about the hip joint again. We're gonna abduct and close. Balance on one leg and close for a minute. Here we go. Now I want you to work on getting the range of motion up on that outer leg. Get the strength of stability up on that standing leg. So try to keep that board level. Now, if you want to, you can slow this down. You don't have to do all the reps I'm doing. The key is to keep it going for the full minute and to work on increasing that range of the outer leg lift without moving or twer twerking, twerking, that's a funny word, isn't it? Torquing the hip. So keep the hips forward. Don't let them turn to the side. Nice, 15 more seconds. Chin up, chest up, bend down, stabilize and squeeze up. Whew, five more seconds. You've got this. All right, last one. Beautiful, shake it out. What we do on one side, we get to do for a minute on the other side. So set up now for stability on your left leg, mobility on your right. Here we go. Out and down. Out and down. Remember that leg you're standing on, you want to stabilize through the ankle. The leg you're lifting, you want to try to keep it facing front and lifting as high. That movement technically is called abduction. Moving the limb away from the midline. Nice. Taking that leg away. Good. Keep going. Whew. This minute seemed to go faster than the other one. Yeah, about 10 seconds. Stay stable on that one side. Last one. Awesome. All right, now, back to standing on the right. What goes out has to go across. So on this one, I want you to cross and drop. So cross, and notice I'm doing a little bit of a one-legged squat on my right leg as I pull the other leg as far across my midline as I can and try to balance. Crossing the midline is called abduction, adding the limb across the midline. Nice. Stabilize on the right, abduct with the left. Keep that chin and chest up. Try to keep the hips level. Ooh, we're getting there. Got about 10 seconds on this side. Excellent. All right, settle out. Get ready on your left foot. Right cross, right and down, and right. Now remember, the leg you're standing on is your stabilizer. From the ankle to the knee and the hip, you wanna bend it a little bit at the knee and hip, but you wanna try to hold that board as steady as you can as you cross that leg as far as you can, maybe even cross touch the pole as a marker. But try not to let the rest of your body wiggle around. Nice. 
we got this. Strength, stability, mobility. Beautiful. Chest up. Again, wiggle your fingers every once in a while so you're not over gripping. You can even shake the arms out if you want. Almost there, 10 more seconds. Nice. Keep going. Nice. Woo. Last one. Awesome. All right, shake it off. That's five minutes. So we're going to turn now. Let's turn to the right. We're going to ease ourselves around so you don't feel unsafe. We're going to do the last two. We're going to be an opposite arm leg reach. So I want you standing on the outside leg. The inside leg is going to go behind you. The arm is going to come up by your ear. You're going to tilt forward and try to level or scale your body as you do so. So don't let your body crunch or round. Here we go, one minute. We're just gonna do nice and slow, like a teeter-totter. Beautiful. Keep that arm alongside your ear. Try to keep that leg fixed, so the standing or the stable leg might have a slight bend at the knee, but that knee stays the same throughout the teeter-totter, like an oil well. Good. Take your time. As many reps as you're comfortable with. Inhale and exhale. This is a great exercise when it comes to mobility around the hip and shoulder and when it comes to stability through the core. Reach, lean, and come back up. And it is awful nice to have that pull there to help you stay steady. Obviously, if you weren't holding on, this would be a lot harder. Ooh, we got 10 seconds to go. Excellent. You can do this. Last one. All right, now bring the feet together. Kind of turn with little tiny baby steps. Turn around. Walk your board and bottom out on the other side. Remember, we're going to take the inside leg back. Outside leg is the stable one. Arm is up along the side of the ear. Here we go. One minute. Lean in. My board is grounded all the way, but I really want you to feel the stability and the mobility of this movement. Now, if you have shoulder issues, you can bend that elbow and just do it with a short lever. I could have told you that before, shouldn't I have? Awesome. But you still want that whole body to pivot at the hip. So the movement is really all at the leg and hip really stays very steady through the core. Nice. You've got this. Nice deep breaths. 15 seconds to go. Try to stay on that strong line like a teeter-totter. If you can't get parallel to four, that's okay too. Keep the neck long. Let's do one more. Beautiful. Okay. Woo. Turn back to front real gingerly. Come to the center. Ease it out. All right, guys. We just got through our second seven. Seven of stability and mobility. So I'm going to have you step off your board and get a sip of water and join me for strength with your tubing or weight. Ground out. Step back. Get some water. Awesome job, everybody. Hey, Susan. Good to have you watching. Okay, here we go. Final phase. Well, not the final phase, because I always like to cool you down and stretch you out. But final phase of the 777. I'm going to use my tubing, but remember, you can also use a weight. I'm going to be on the floor and in my chair. So at first, we're going to start on the floor. I need you to take the side of the tubing that looks more like a, like a stirrup than a handle. You're going to put that underneath. Let's start with our right foot. Underneath your right foot, just kind of wiggle it down there. I'll give you a second. Bending over is an exercise. <laughs> All right, so then I'm going to take my handle and I'm going to grab it with my palm forward in front of me. I'm going to hold on to the pole with the opposite arm and I'm going to lift and drop in front of my face. Now, if this tube is just offering a little more resistance than you like, then bend your knees or at least, 
don't know, it's hard to bend my knee and not look a little funky here. Maybe go into a lunge with a bent knee. Because when you bend your knees, it gives you a little bit more slack to work with. Are you going? One minute, right arm, breathe. You can do this, and you might have to take a break if the muscle starts to fatigue, especially if that tubing is offering a bit of resistance, it's okay to take a mini break. Like for me, I'm gonna break right now because this is my weak arm. And then as soon as I feel okay, which I do now, I'm gonna keep going. So you can always come back and do more. Because you've got about 15 seconds to go. Stand tall, keep your chin up, keep your chest up. Whew. I don't know about you, but I'm feeling it. Four and three and two. Now, we're gonna to pivot towards that foot. We're gonna take the, uh, the hand and we're gonna grab down. So see what I did? That's called choking up. I'm gonna hold my um, other hand on that handle so that I can lean forward with support. Then for a minute, we're gonna do rows, pulling that elbow up. Let me show you from the other side so you can see better. So I'm in a forward lean. We're starting, guys. Okay, this foot is in front, sorry. And then I've got a nice strong spine. I've grabbed my tube to take some of the slack out so I feel some good resistance on that back muscle, shoulder muscle, bicep muscle. I'm in the lunge, halfway through. Pull up, these are strong muscles. You can usually do a little more than with that, than that last move where I had to take a break in the middle. Keep going, keep your core aligned, keep your spine strong. 15 seconds to go. Excellent. Don't forget to breathe, exhale as you pull. Whew, 10 seconds. Excellent move for the back and for posture. Last two, last one. Okay, come back to the center. Go ahead and let that two shimmy off your foot. And then, and it's okay if you need to use your chair to set up, put it under the, or put it over the other foot. I guess I should have told you that the first time around. It's a lot easier to put them on when you're sitting. And then stand up, putting that handle in your palm, holding on with the other hand, need a little wide for shoulder, distant stance for stability. Get going, I'm watching the clock. Here we go, overhead. Now, as I said, this is my stronger side, so I'll probably be able to make the full minute without taking a break. And that's good too. Main thing you wanna do is not lose what you have, even on those sides that are a little less able. Up and down. going. Ooh, this arm's getting tired too. No shame in taking a break here, guys. Or reducing the range. That's another slight way of taking a break. And then when it feels a little stronger, we've got about 10 seconds to go, push all the way. Ooh, I'm feeling this in my back and shoulder. I hope you are too. Last two, last one. All right, now we're gonna turn and face that foot, remember? We're gonna keep our hand on the handle. We're gonna choke up on the tube, meaning grabbing down lower, and lean in and row. Remember the row, I'm showing you in the opposite direction so you can see the action. It's a bicep curl with a nice lat pull. That's it. Notice my spine and my neck stay in line. Don't move, just my arm moves. That's it. You've got this. Whew. Keep breathing. Full minute. Again, this is the stronger group. Those lat muscles, those back muscles, they're the ones that we do all our pulling with, our lifting with. They're very important. But so is the functionality of being able to lift something without rounding your back or losing a nice core stability. So keep your concentration not only on the lift, but on the stable base, the 
legs and the spine. Keep breathing. Inhale and exhale. Whew, get in there. Got about 10 more seconds on this side. Whew. Last two. Last one. All right, come on up. Shimmy that tube off your foot. And then let's find our chair. Ain't gonna feel good to sit down for a bit, isn't it? All right, so scooch on back to your chair. We're still gonna use our tubing. We got four out of seven done minutes. Feet in front, nice right angles. Holding, notice how my tube is just hanging, the ends are, and I've grabbed it about shoulder distance. Now for a minute, we're gonna drop our shoulder girdle, sit real tall and just pull, pull. Let's go. Now, if these are dangling around too much and it's irritating you, just hold the handles as well. Let me get a little closer so you can see this grip. Good, keep going. 15 seconds down. I want my shoulders down. I wanna generate the movement back between my shoulder blades. My arms are coming in a little towards my chest, almost like I'm rowing. That's it, keep going. Woo, four, three, two, one, and shake it out. Very good, relax your shoulder girdle. Nice work, everybody. All right, two more to go. Now we're gonna take the arm, we're gonna hold one up at the shoulder, the other is gonna go down and behind you to work the tricep. Nice, so I'm turning to the side, you don't have to. I'm just turning to the side so again, you have a better idea of exactly what I'm doing. That's it. I'm gonna come closer so once again, you can more clearly see my arm position. One is up, one is back. And I have grabbed the tubing at a point where I feel a nice amount of resistance as I extend that elbow fully to the back. Note that I don't let my head move. I'm not jutting my chin. I'm keeping everything nice and stable. How's our time? Okay, switching sides. A nice little shift. Just go from here to there and start the same move on the other arm. Concentrating on that back of the arm, back of the shoulder. Those are all very important muscles to keep strong, to maintain good shoulder health and posture and alignment. Squeeze it back. This is minute seven, believe it or not. So in a few seconds, we're done. 21 and done. Seven minutes of cardio, seven of mobility and strength and balance, and seven of strength for the muscles. 15 seconds. You can do this. Sit tall, but lean a little forward. Get an extra gravity resistance on that tricep muscle. Two more. And last one, okay, Ooh, I don't know about you, but I could use a little shake out. Excellent. And some water. So this is your final, 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 final ending of the class is gonna be some nice stretching. I hope you're ready for that and wanting it. All right, so get yourself a little water. I'm gonna cool this down so that we can change pace a little. Nice hydration stop. And then again, I'm gonna use the chair during our cool down, so we'll go ahead and sit down. We did a lot today between our tests or our little markers that we use. I'm just centering my board so you can see me. Um, and our 77721 and done workout. We will be doing that all month long Every Wednesday, I'll shake it up a little, change the way we do it, but it'll still be that 21 and done philosophy and strategy of goal, smart goal, setting, tracking, rewarding. And now you know how to monitor too. All right, so from here, let's roll the shoulders back and hold them back. Pull the arms in with the palms up and then make a little outward, inward, rotation movement. Let me pivot so you can see what's happening here. The thumbs are going back. 
My elbows are staying right against my body. Oh, that should feel like a nice deep stretch in the rotator cuff of the shoulder. Keep it slow and try to get it to open up further and further each time without letting the elbows come up. Keep them right alongside your ribcage. Inhale and exhale. Two more times. Last one. Ah, and I promised another screen, didn't I? Upper body screen. Take the right arm, lift it with the elbow up alongside your head, palm facing back and down, and touch your spine behind you and see if you can actually touch the ridge of the opposite shoulder blade. If you cannot touch the opposite shoulder blade, I know you can't see it, but try to think about how far away you are from it. Your goal is to be able to touch the opposite shoulder blade. If you're way far away and you're feeling your spine, you're probably good two to three inches away. Think about how this side is performing in the backpack. Hold it there and breathe. It's a stretch and screen at the same time. See if after a second or two of holding, you can maybe push back a little more and get a greater range. Again, what your goal is, is to touch the upper ridge of the opposite shoulder blade or scapula. Now gently lower it. Sometimes you'll get a little clicking sensation if you do that too fast. And then let's take the other arm, left arm, same thing. Palm is facing your back, elbow goes up, support it. Find your spine and then slide and see if you can get it to touch the ridge of the opposite shoulder. That's your goal. This is your marker. If you can't, maybe somebody nearby could tell you how far you are away so that as you start to progress and see progression, you can maybe say, oh, well, I was two inches away and now I'm only an inch and a half. If you're hitting the mark and you're able to touch that scapula on the other side, that's a good, that's good. That's a good marker and be happy with it and just hold it. And then let's slowly let that arm come down. All right, now opposite action. We're gonna come behind us with the palm facing away. And we're gonna creep that hand up the back and see if you can touch the lower ridge of the scapula on the opposite side. So see how I'm feeling around for my scapula? This is my bad arm, it doesn't go very far without having a lot of torso movement. So you wanna keep your torso up, your head and chin parallel to the floor and try to touch or scratch, they call that the back scratch. Scratch that opposite shoulder girdle. See if you can touch it. Hold and breathe. And then release it. Now same thing, other arm. Start with the palm away from your back. Start down low and then creep it up. See if you can touch the bottom ridge of that scapula. You might notice one arm goes a lot, like on me, this arm goes a lot higher. I haven't lost as much mobility over here. So hold it there, it's not as big a struggle. Sometimes you might wanna mark down, rather than an inch, the quality. How hard was it? Was it easy? Was it a little difficult? Hopefully monitoring for improvement as we continue to do some of these stretches. This is a stretch when you hold it for 30 seconds or more. And then go ahead and release. And let's move on to our lower body screen, which I did show you last week. You're gonna scooch out towards the edge of your chair. One foot is flat, the other one comes out long with the foot, the ankle at 90 degrees. Both hands, one over the other. Slide down without rounding and see how far you can get down to your shin without bending that knee or rounding the back. So keep the back flat. Take it to the point of discomfort, not pain. Breathe, inhale and exhale. And we need to hold it. So whatever point you can hold for that nice 20 seconds or so, and kind of make a mental note. I'm at the midpoint of my shin, and I'm feeling the tension or discomfort just enough where I can handle it and hold it, and that's my marker for today. Nice deep breath, inhale and exhale. Feel the stretch of the hamstring. If the toe is up, you'll feel it in the calf as well. And then gently slide back. 
switch feet. Again, hands sliding down, foot 90 degree, flex that ankle. Ooh, maybe this leg's a little different than the other. Try not to collapse your spine, keep your chest up. Lean from the hip and see where your fingers go. Is it different on this side? You can write down, oh, my fingers went all the way down my ankle. Or no, they only came to mid shin. But don't cheat it, don't take it past pain and don't completely round your back to get there. Try to keep that back in its neutral alignment. Nice deep breath. Inhale and exhale, moving that stretch behind the leg, behind the calf, behind the hamstring, or the thigh area. And then slowly come back up. Bring the feet to the front, scoot back in your chair a little bit. Hands to thighs, cat to cobra. So we're going to come forward in a cobra action, and then we're going to round up for the cat. Oh, that should feel really nice on your spine. Let's just do a little rhythmic limbering and loosening for a second. Deep breath as you come forward, inhale. As you go back, exhale. Inhale through the nose. Exhale through the mouth. Again, inhale. Exhale. One more time. Nice stretch and mobility through the back. Now hold tall. Let the ears stretch to the right, to the left. Let the ear drop and stretch towards the right. Bring it back up and look behind your left with your head, face, chin, nose, and then reverse, and behind the right. And then bring it back to the center. From our center point, let's inhale up, gather the energy, gather the strength, gather the endurance, and let's pull it down through our body, into our feet. Let's do that one more time. Inhale up, pulling down and re-energizing the body. And then shake off anything. Oh, bad, stress, aggressive, tension. Get rid of it and bring it back to peacefulness. And yourself a, a bow or a hand or whatever you need for a job well done in possibly week two of the 21 and done possibly week one wherever you've joined us just remember you want to get 21 days in of exercise meeting your goal using these markers and hopefully logging your progress and I would love to hear how it goes for you guys from the beginning of what is it you're really focusing on? Is it strength? Is it flexibility? Is it balance? Is it the endurance to be able to get out of a chair without help or to go up and down the block without a cane or a walker? Or maybe you're more fit than that and you want to go from walking to jogging. There's so many levels and so many goals. We just need to manage them and keep them smart by dividing them and tracking them like we are. So I want to thank you again for being with me on Wednesday. I'm here every Wednesday always trying to come up with something new to share with you and to keep you motivated. Remember that there's nothing better to share than the gift of fitness with your friends, your relatives, everyone. So if your friends don't have a board, make sure that they get one and can join you. So let's see if there's anybody here that checked in that I didn't get a chance to see. And please note that I do go back and, and check the board for any questions that you have Good morning, good morning, yes. And I'm always welcome to field any questions you're having or if I don't know the right answer, I can address it to the right person, whether that's someone in sales or Dan who uh, is the creator of this workout and knows it better than anyone else. 
So again, I'm so glad you all joined me today. Uh, it's a pleasure to be your instructor and hopefully instruct you in a way where you can also instruct yourself on the 60th. All right, guys, I'm going to sign off because we are past the hour, and I will hope to see you again next Wednesday. Let's do this, 21 and done. Woohoo, 60 up. Take care.